morning and welcome to the Jamaican Foundation for Lifelong Learning Opportunities Fair here in Emancipation Park and what a venue for an Opportunities Fair. We welcome the most honorable Professor Sir Kenneth Hall, former Governor General and uh, an educator par excellence. Special welcome, of course, to the Minister of Education, who I'm sure would rather be nowhere else but right here for this Opportunities Fair. And for those who don't know, know him, he's the Reverend, I can't imagine anyone who doesn't, but he's the Reverend, Reverend the Honorable Ronald Thwaites, uh, who is representing the most honorable Portia Simpson Miller, Prime Minister. And uh, uh, we we're scheduled to have an, a representative from the opposition as well. Not sure if we have a representative, uh, but the opposition leader and uh, his team were invited. We welcome the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education, Mrs. Elaine Foster Allen, uh, Mrs. Grace McLean, the chief education officer in the ministry, Dr. Franklin Johnston, senior advisor to the Minister of Education and one who I gather, since I was not born back then, was quite instrumental in the establishment of the forerunner to the JFLL, Jamal. And uh, other members of the Education Ministry, welcome. Mrs. Audrey Hinchcliffe, the indefatigable Audrey Hinchcliffe, who chairs the Jamaican Foundation for Lifelong Learning Board. Other members of the board, management and staff, the learners of JFLL representing all 14 parishes of Jamaica. Welcome to you. We acknowledge members of the diplomatic corps, the new British High Commissioner to Jamaica. I believe he's uh, uh, David Fitton. Yes, welcome to you, sir. Welcome to the representatives as well. I believe we have a representative from the Venezuelan uh, embassy and uh, other. Panama, the Panamanian, uh, is it the ambassador? No, representative from the Panama, Panamanian embassy. And Canada, of course. Thank you so much. Welcome to members of the diplomatic corps. There are other representatives of key uh, agencies. We have the Director General of the Jamaica Library Service, uh, Ms. Patricia Roberts, welcome to you. The Executive Director of the Jamaica Employers Federation is here as well, uh, Ms. Cuthbert, Brenda Cuthbert, welcome. The trade unionists are here. Uh, where's Mr. Morrison, welcome. Danny Roberts of the Sir Hugh Lawson Scherer uh, Trade Union Education Institute on the Mona campus of the UWI. <laughs> Other distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, uh, very special welcome to you and thank you so much for braving the, the weather. And this is one of the reasons I had no problems in New York recently when they were all talking about the weather. And I was asking what heat, because maybe because I'm accustomed to this, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's great to have you all here. We're gonna begin our program as we do with any program in Jamaica uh, of significance with the national anthem. Please stand for the national anthem.
Please remain standing as we invite Reverend Dr. Webster Edwards, a JFLL director, to invoke the presence of the Almighty. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the work of the Jamaican Foundation for Lifelong Learning. We pray that this will be a new day for our people, a day of hope, a day of inspiration, a time when our vulnerable young adults will be given the opportunity to prepare themselves meaningfully for the future. We thank you for all those who have guided this project, which is about to be launched. We pray for those who will be ensuring its implementation. We pray for all those who will benefit, that they may ultimately learn about life, about how to live meaningfully and productively to the greater good of our people and to the benefit of our country, Jamaica land we love. Help us to be passionate lovers of our country, to respect its institutions and to uphold its values, to eschew violence, intimidation, all that dehumanizes and all that destroys. Finally, help us to recognize that all the world belongs to all the people, all the goods of nature, all the gifts of humanness. So bless this project, ensure its success, and grant that what will be imparted today may truly be the start of something good. We ask it for your name's sake. Amen. And we now invite the chairperson of the JFLL board, Mrs. Audrey Hinchcliffe, to officially welcome all present and bring greetings. The Master of Ceremonies, our former Governor General, Professor Kenneth Hall, Minister of Education, the Honorable Ronald Twaits, Permanent Secretary, Chief Education Officer. We're expecting the Minister of Labor or his representative momentarily. Members of the Diplomatic Corps, representatives of the Ministry of Education, members of the Board of Directors of the Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning, our local and international partners and the colleagues in adult education, members of the trade union movement, our supporters and partners in this initiative, particularly the Gleaner Company, members of the media, members of the staff of the Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning, and other officials. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to JFLL Opportunities Fair. I must thank all those who have contributed to making this initiative a reality. To our partners in education, the hard-working planning committee, as well as members of the staff, both from our headquarters and the field. Our representatives for this afternoon's seminar, our exhibitors, I mentioned the Gleaner Company before, the media in general for its very, very general support for getting the messages out there in the past weeks and to all of those who have spread the word. We value your presence and thank you very much. I am excited, yes, I am excited this morning on a number of levels. I am excited not only because after months of planning, hard work and preparation, we are now witnessing the fruit of our labor. Further, I am excited because I believe that as an organization and as a nation, we are standing on the threshold of something meaningful and life-changing for many Jamaicans. That great war hero and former Prime Minister of Great Britain, Winston Churchill, once said, 
All that is valuable in human society depends upon the opportunity for development according the individual. As a believer in education, and everyone knows that we have established one in my business, I have always been convinced that a second chance must be made available for those who were unable, for whatever reason, to graduate from secondary school. I feel especially privileged as chairman of the board of the JFLL to be working with an exceptional team to realize this program for high school certification on a national scale. It is true, Jamaica has made tremendous strides since the formal adult education initiative was introduced as far back as 1972. Mr. Franklin Johnson is here, and the relatives of Honorable Joyce Robinson are here. That's the history. Those are the people on whose shoulders we are standing today. However, today, this launch event acknowledges the awareness and existing gaps in adult education and our commitment to expanding our programs even further. It is now time for those who were left, from the, left outside the formal education system without attaining a high school diploma to grasp the golden opportunity to realize their dream and lay the foundation through education for a better life. I make a special shout out to our boys and men. You cannot continue to be outpaced by our girls and women. This morning, ladies and gentlemen, we are witnessing the conversion of a vision, value, and opportunity, and I'm excited at the change that JFLL will bring into the lives of those who see the inherent value and will choose to em embrace our programs. This opportunity is fair, not only signals the repositioning of the JFLL, it is also intended to notify every Jamaican in need of high school certification that your chance to achieve that goal is now here through the high school diploma equivalency program. Someone once said, opportunity does not knock. It presents itself when you beat down the door. The JFLL has gone a step further. As of today, we are saying that you do not have to be down the door. We have opened it wide, and all you have to do is walk through it, register for our programs, and begin the journey to change your life for the better forever. Jamaica can only develop into a knowledge-based economy because more competitive and achieve its first world aspiration. Let me read that again. Jamaica can only develop into a knowledge-based e economy, become more competitive, and achieve its first world aspirations if our people are ready and able to take that step. To do so, they must be more educated and strategically positioned to avail themselves of the opportunities for personal and professional growth and development that the information age presents. Through the high school diploma program, we want to send a message that as long as you are 17 years old and above, you qualify for entry, as it is not too late to improve the standard of your education. And it is gratifying to note, ladies and gentlemen, that the JFLL and its partners are already changing lives for the better, as hundreds of Jamaicans have bought into the vision of lifelong learning and are seeing good results. Take the case of Fabian Laws, who, tired of being a high school dropout, enrolled in one of our programs which placed him on a path to becoming an engineer. Or Dylan Dawes, 
whose learning experience of the JFLL led him to conclude the best way to achieve is to continue learning. And then there is Dale Taylor Dennis, whose appetite for learning once wet is declared, I want to go further. I want to do more now that I know my real potential. You can read the stories of these and other JFLN learners on our website, but the message today to all who did not complete their secondary education is that past mistakes do not have to dictate your future. The fact that some parents could not have afforded their children a high school education does not mean that as adults, those persons are forever doomed. The JFLL stands ready and willing to assist those who wish to learn and to become certified. We are excited at the prospect of helping to develop a culture of lifelong learning in Jamaica, of assisting other Jamaicans to discover their real potential and guiding our learners to personal and professional growth as they position themselves to open doors for upward social and financial mobility. The words of Benjamin Disraeli, another former Prime Minister of Britain, eloquently summarized our message. One secret of success in life is for a man or woman to be ready for his opportunity when it comes. At the JFLL, we have lifted that veil of secrecy the JFLL is focused on providing lifelong learning for lifelong opportunities. Thank you. We apologize for the absence of the Honorable Lisa Hanna, uh, Minister of Youth and Culture. And we're now going to hear from the Honorable Derek Kelly, the Minister of Labor and Social Security. Master of Ceremonies. Mr. Durban Malcolm, Honorable Ronald Thwaites, Minister of Education, former GG, Sir Kenneth Hall, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education and other senior officers from the Ministry, Mrs. Audrey Hinchliff, Chairman of JFL and other members of the board of JFL, representatives of UNESCO, other partners, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. First of all, I wish to thank the Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning for inviting me to bring greetings on behalf of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security at today's Opportunity Sphere under the theme Lifelong learning for lifelong opportunities. Today's fear is important for several reasons. The most notable being that it is being organized in recognition of the fact that Jamaica's productivity levels and position in the world economy can only improve when as a country we maintain a laser-like focus on literacy and lifelong learning. Without this, we are doomed to mediocrity in our development aspirations. The CARCOM Commonwealth Secretariat in a study entitled Caribbean Development to the Year 2000, Challenging Prospects and Policies, states, and I quote, failure to produce an appropriately trained and educated population would constrain the adaptability of the Commonwealth Caribbean to structural changes in the world economy and to substantially improve its developmental performance, end of quote. With this in mind, there is no doubt whatsoever that since the beginning of the new millennium, the world economy has undergone profound structural changes. For example, the speed at which technology is changing today requires no less than every human being on this earth constantly adapting to new technology. What this means in real terms is that regardless of the career one chooses in today's world, 
we now all have to commit ourselves to a process of lifelong learning, our skills upgrading to be able to keep a pace with a rapidly changing and technologically advanced world. In all of this, I take the opportunity today to remind the aspiring participants in today's fair that literacy becomes a precondition for rapid productivity growth across all sectors of the Jamaican economy. This is because globalization in all its manifestations is forcing upon Jamaica the imperative of cultivating literate Jamaicans who refuse to be dependent literates, trapped in the bondage of distraction to someone else's learning or technology. And this is why the primary reason why we in the Ministry of Labor and Social Security are proud to salute the efforts of the Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning in staging today's Opportunities Fair to guide participants through the process of getting a high school diploma, better jobs, appropriate certifications, and skills training. The JFL clearly recognizes the imperatives of development and prosperity in the 21st century to the future of our country. By staging today's fair, it is also telling us that as a society we will need to pull together all relevant strategies to produce more literate workers if we are going to be able to cope successfully in the race for economic development. And let me say clearly that by literacy, I'm not thinking of being able simply to read and write. We in the Ministry of Labor and Social Security refer to literacy in the non-traditional sense of being able to find innovative and creative solutions to everyday problems in both the workplace and the home by making use of the creative imagination. This forms a great part of the reason why the ministry, going forward, is committed to maintaining focus on productivity growth. I deem this to be the single most important strategy capable of accomplishing several extraordinary development goals, such as accelerating and sustaining growth in our gross domestic product, enhancing growth in our standard of living, and raising profits and share prices, among others. Jamaica must improve its labor and total factor productivity levels in order to improve the slow growth in GDP and stagnation in the standard of living for most Jamaicans. As you, the participants in today's events, you can play a critical part in making this improvement a reality. Let me declare that all of us, government, the private sector, trade unions, civil society groups, Jamaican men and women, young and old, have a duty to work hard to have our country face the reality of its marginalized majority. Ultimately, it is the energy of that labor force that must be mobilized around to greater productivity, social transformation, national reconstruction, and economic growth. Thanks once again to the JFL for its very kind invitation to bring greetings. And I want to wish all the participants in today's activities enlightenment and much success. Thank you. And now we bring to you one who is so talented, I don't even think he knows how talented he is. He has given us so many classics in, over the years. Just give him a topic and he'll give you a song. Please welcome Lloyd Lovender doing Lifelong Learning. My heart is Walk away and leave me here to Joe, revival in a lonely 
for lifelong learning, I jumped at the opportunity because as a former teacher, I understand the importance of education and learning. So this was easy for me to come up with. So I would them say, boy, the tuna sell off with Wigan. It was easy for me. I almost feel guilty for collecting their money for doing the song. <laughs> anyway, so it go. This is a song, Run Track Boss. Don't start to get to get your diploma. That's a fact, that's not a rumor. The Jamaican Foundation for Life, Love, and Learning Kids, so hardly the bloomer. Here is, don't give up on learning. Have a desire and keep it burning. Start the palette is turning at Jamaican Foundation for Life, Love, and Learning. Nobody sit here yearning for a diploma you should be earning.
Successful songwriter in the music business means I can write on almost any topic. So a certain topic came up 25 years ago. I'm gonna write a song about it. So I'm gonna do a song. I'm write about it. Run the track, boss. Who believe people them say? Gilbert. Well, Gilbert's a god. <laughs> no, we can chat behind your back. In a class lectured by Loving Dear. <laughs> Let's hear it one more time for Mr. Lloyd Loving Dear. We have a couple of presentations to be made, and so we invite Mrs. Sandra Tyrell, Director of Technical Services, to help us with those presentations. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We have been having a good day so far, and it continues to be exciting. We had a poster and an essay competition as part of the activities leading up to this launch. Our poster, we opened up island-wide to all our learners in our JFLL Foundation program. We got 13 entries from our learners island-wide. We opened up the essay competition 
to all our learners in the secondary program and the high school equivalency program. We received 12 entries. We had our judging and we have selected first, second, and third place for each of these competitions. I'm going to invite Mrs. Audrey Hinchcliffe to come up to give the awards for the JFLL, the JFLL poster competition. We have a tie for third place from our Clarendon Adult Education Center. We have Andre Rowe and Elroy Brown. Andre and Elroy. In second place, coming out of JFLL Darling Street, Orain Bailey. Mr. Alan Morrison from, from Kingston and St. Andrew again from the Bethel Adult Education Center. So Mr. Morrison has received this year the perpetual trophy as well as a replica. Thank you very much. We also have a basket courtesy of our sponsor, our partners from Grace Kennedy. In honor of Dr. Joyce Robinson, we have the Dr. Joyce Robinson essay trophy. I would like to ask Mr. Andrew Rob Anthony Robinson to make the presentations on our behalf, Dr. Robinson's son. In third place, Coming out of Trelawney, we have Chantal Wright. I understand that Miss Wright, I understand that Miss Wright is away at Bible Camp, and so our acting parish manager, Miss Alenthea Burnett, will accept on her behalf. In second place, coming out of St. Catherine. Our Spanish Town Adult Education Center, we have Maxine Barrett Lecky. Maxine? Okay, could we have a representative from St. Catherine accepting this trophy on behalf of Maxine? Our first place winner comes out of St. Catherine as well from our Spanish Town Adult Education Center, Jacqueline Sherwood. This year, Ms. Sherwood has received the Dr. Joyce Robinson Essay Trophy. Thank you very much, members of staff, board. Welcome again, and thank you for coming. And now, the main address to be delivered by the Minister himself, the Minister of Education, representing the Most Honourable Portia Simpson Miller, Prime Minister of Jamaica. Please welcome Reverend the Honourable Ronald George Twaits. Sir Kenneth Hall, Mrs. Audrey Hinchcliffe, Your Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, members of the Executive of the Ministry of Education and partners of JFFL, board members of JFFL, Ladies and gentlemen, I wonder how many of you saw the television news last night and the program called Ray of Hope. There was a story, it's not finished yet, of that young woman who had missed her opportunity to finish school. She became pregnant, she said, when she was 13 and she dropped out of school. And when she had the opportunity or the necessity to take her son to school and stay with him because 
he had a challenge, a learning challenge. She grasped the opportunity to sit beside children who could have been, and indeed one was her child. And she not only helped her son through the primary curriculum, but she also engaged in the primary curriculum herself. And she graduated from primary school at age 26, I think they said. Well, what we're doing this morning at this Opportunities Fair, and what is only beginning today, but represents the finest resolve, not only of the Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning and its partners, but of the government of Jamaica, and I believe all of the people of Jamaica, is to provide the opportunity to encourage the same spirit that that lady who we told you about represented. Everybody needs a second chance in life, don't they? I need multiple second chances in my love life, in my learning life, and in every aspect of life. And I'm sure that it's just the same with you. If we think about it, what hope would we have if our God wasn't a God of second chances? And therefore, today, we come to offer the opportunity to all Jamaicans of a second chance. I'm so glad that there are many young people here today because, in fact, I'm hoping that you won't need that second chance, those of you who are still in school, and even as we offer the opportunity of a high school education to those who never had the opportunity or who missed it for whatever reason, it doesn't really matter. So we must begin by enjoining those who are in school now not to miss the opportunity that they are being given. One has to speak the truth that over 20,000, we estimate credibly, of those who graduated from high school after grade 11, 11 years of expensive and sacrificial education, over 20,000 of those this year graduated with just a certificate of attendance and a pretty picture in a cap and gown. They don't have the certification. They don't have the wherewithal to be employed to advance to tertiary education or, in fact, to create a job for themselves. And we have to, even as we advance the opportunities again, we have to say that high school education, all education, is a pearl of great price, bought at great expense in this country. And we have to start regarding it even more highly than we have in recent times. Everybody needs another opportunity. The development capacity of Jamaica, striving as a nation to move beyond 1% economic growth a year, striving to reduce rather than see extend the unemployment levels in our society, troubled by the news this morning of the workers who are losing their work in some parts of the countryside and whose predicament, sad though that is, is made worse because many of them will not have the skills and the qualification to find themselves another job easily because their educational output has been limited. Development is being cramped in this country because of a lack of absorptive capacity is the phrase that the economists use. Very often we have to attract low-level investments in Jamaica because our workforce simply is not well enough trained to take on the higher order, better playing, paying operations. Recently, I visited the business process operators in Montego Bay, and I looked at the various ranges of opportunities that are there to provide services to offshore companies. And I asked why there were more people serving to extend credit to the telephone company, a relatively simple op op operation. The companies abroad, when you want to add credit, you get somebody in Jamaica to do it for you. But there were much, many more people working in that and earning less money, good though that job is, thankful for it, want more, 
There were much, many more people working there than they were working in the higher levels of that same building, that same company's operation. The higher order people were working on assessing securities and providing high level analysis to banks all across America and Canada. Jamaica's future depends upon the increased educational outcomes, the skills, capacity of all of our people. I'm so glad that there are representatives of the trade unions here this morning because I'm hoping that the alternate high school diploma and all of the offerings of JFLL will be taken up in every workplace in this country and that employers represented this morning is the Employers Association among many others that they will see to their advantage to support JFFL and to support their workers engaging in continuing education. Education makes you trainable. Training makes you employable. Employment makes you productive. Productivity makes you prosperous. And so today we look forward to a new Jamaica. Today we open a door of opportunity which was ajar but not fully opened and so many people did not know what was inside that hall of progress that further education really provides. The alternative high school diploma is not a second rate qualification. You are going to be the equivalent of anyone who graduates from the finest high school in Jamaica. The range of subjects and the methodology of imparting them will be the same and you will probably have an advantage because you will have a skill which will be marketable, which will make you readily employed. You will be learning what you need to know how to know yourself as a proud Jamaican, whatever your ethnic origin and whatever part of this community you come from. You will be learning what you need to get a job and to make a job. Make no mistake about it, the subjects that are set out in this organizational guide should be studied carefully all around Jamaica. It is important that we not only know, understand the English language, but that we must be able to express it, and that is what we will be schooled in. It is important that the skills of numeracy through mathematics be available and grasped by all of us. This is the age of technology, so information technology and the prism of the 21st century, which is scientific knowledge, will also be available to those who never thought it possible. And the opportunities to learn about ourselves, our rights, our responsibilities, our relationships will also be inculcated through civics and the health and family life education curriculum. JFFL, through this program, offers an opportunity to persons who must come wherever they are and whatever the level of education they have had. If you can't recognize A from B, come anyway. If you reach six book, come back and let's finish. It doesn't matter. This program must take you as you are, irrespective of age, and take you to the level at your pace where you can be properly certified as a Jamaican worker, a Jamaican professional. There will be no economic progress to this country if some 70% of our workers are not certified. Your corner is dark, our corner is dark, if people do not recognize that it is education and only education which is the only legitimate means of upward mobility in the society. It is not a shame to acknowledge that you need to come to JFFL. In fact, you are to be congratulated and rewarded when you do because you are recognizing what is your situation 
rather than trying to camouflage it. The programs that have been announced and rolled out this morning, the rebranding of JFFL, will be driven, demand driven in their rollout. I am encouraging everybody in Jamaica, anybody who feels that they need to improve their education because for whatever reason you didn't get a high school diploma, you didn't have the opportunity to finish school, to come, you will not be turned away. Yes, you will be asked to bear a modest cost for these programs, but Mrs. Hinchcliffe, try don't turn away anyone because they don't have the money. We have to find ways in order to be able to assist everyone to ensure that they make use of this opportunity. This morning, this effort, this effort which can transform Jamaica's productivity, our sense of satisfaction, our hope in otherwise dismal times, this morning we launch it and relaunch it on the shoulders of those who gave their efforts many of them their whole careers to the advancement of literacy. It is appropriate that it is taking place in Emancipation Park because illiteracy is mental slavery and it is here in this sacred place that we fly a new flag, that we sing a new song towards achievement, towards hope. No longer the handout, no longer the dependency, but the use of that which God has given to us, our brains, our minds, that which distinguishes us as human persons to advance ourselves, to advance our nation. This morning, we remember the pioneers of the literacy movement in Jamaica. Dr. Joyce Robinson, represented by her children here this morning, is clapping in heaven. So is Marjorie Curlew. So is Lassels Beckford. So are those achieving the happiness here of persons like Dr. Johnson, the Honorable Danny Williams, and so many others still with us who gave up their time and effort to the early literacy movement. Today is a time to stir the spirit of the volunteers, of the retired teachers, of those teachers who have qualified but cannot find a job in the regular school system. Come to J JFFL and see if we can not find you a, a way that even for a couple hours a week you are instructing and therefore getting your feet set on the rung of engagement in education. This morning, we fulfill the dream of the late, Ma late Michael Norman Manley. I remember his passion in the 1970s. He saw what was essential for the future of the nation then. Perhaps the dream waned and we faltered in the midst, but that doesn't matter. What is important is that we should invest it with the passion that I hear in Mrs. Hinchcliffe's voice, that I know that infects every member of staff of the JFFL, the Library Service, and all their collaborators. And I trust that this good work which has been begun will be brought to completion in our time. Thanks very much. And now, we invite the Public Relations and Marketing Manager at the Jamaican Foundation for Lifelong Learning, JFLL, Mr. Colin Nita, to move the vote of thanks. Honorable former Governor General, Madam Permanent Secretary, Madam Chief Executive, Chief Education Officer, other distinguished ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, I'd like to say thank you to the Creator, the Lord above, for this is the day that He hath made, and it is a bright and beautiful day, yes? Secondly, I'd like to thank the Ministry of Education, led by the Honorable Minister of Education, Reverend um, Ronald Thwaites, for empowering us at the JFLL to be able to carry forth with this new renaissance in adult education. I would also like to take time to thank our chairman and our board of directors, um, starting with M. Audrey Hinchcliffe, our chairman. A very big thank you to her for the vision and drive that she has brought to the JFLL and to the remainder of the board of directors who have brought 
their own powerful energies and talents to bear on what is going to be a bright renaissance in adult education. Staying at home, I'd like to thank the staff of the JFLL for the indefatigable efforts that they have put in over many, many years of delivering quality adult education and inspiring adult and youth learners to come back to the classroom and to improve their lives. And I would also like to take a special opportunity to thank the members of the planning committee because as we know, we've all heard the cliche, there is no I in team. And it is a team effort that has brought us here this bright and beautiful day. So I'd like to say a special thanks to them all. Going a little further afield, I'd like to thank all of our great partners, both in education and in the corporate world, in particular the Gleaner Company. We'd like to thank you all for the efforts and support that you've shown to JFL, both for this event, our Opportunities Fair, and for all of the other endeavors in which we have partnered and engaged in over the years. Finally, I'd like to thank the public at large because it is them who we serve and it is for them that we operate. You have shown us great support throughout the years, sometimes as volunteers, sometimes as students, and to many of them who have actually come to us as students and remain with us as teachers. We thank you for all that support. It has been wonderful. We thank again, I look to the heavens above and I say thanks be to the Creator, for this is the day the Lord hath made. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the board and directors and staff of the Jamaican Foundation for Lifelong Learning, thank you all very much. All that's left for me to do is to thank Mr. for thanking everyone. And we trust that uh, you will take the time to visit the booths, interact with some of our learners, and uh, enjoy this beautiful day. Thank you very much. God bless you. Take care.